So, Kat, got 100 days to go until the Olympics. What does this mean to you and uh, what have you got coming up? 100 days kind of makes it a little bit real, a little bit scary. It's not very long, really. It's not a lot you can change or a lot you can do in 100 days. So, kind of makes it all feel a little bit real. We've, um, we've still got some more trials going um, up until, like, see who gets picked for the Olympics and what have you. So, it's, it's going to be pretty much get down and focus and, and make sure we're ready for that last trial. So tell us why you've chosen Lillishall as your training base. It's somewhere where you can come and you can just focus, you can concentrate. It's secluded, it's out the way, you don't really know what's going on in the outside world. So when you're here you can just get down and focus on your training and not have to worry about anything else. You'll be able to just do kind of what you need to do building up to it. If it did all go to plan, what would you most be looking forward to at the Olympics? Would it be the Athletes Village, the kitting out process? So I've never been to a Games before so I don't really know what to expect. Going to the kit and out will just kind of be a bit of a taster of what it's going to feel like, but I don't think anything will beat being inside the Athletes Village and being around Olympians from all across the world. Kat, going into the Olympics, would you be looking to just get experience or have you got some goals that you're looking to achieve? Obviously experience is going to be a massive thing having not done a Games, but of course you're going to have goals going into it. Um, a British woman trampolinist hasn't made a final at Games yet, so that would be my first goal. Um, and then obviously once you're in a final, you never know what's going to happen. The last year for you has been fantastic. Can you tell us about some of your highlights? I think it all started off in Japan and China at the World Cups out there. Came back with three silver medals, which made me feel really good. Went into nationals a couple of weeks later. Obviously, confidence really high. Regained um, my senior British title. Then went on to a couple of World Cups after that. That it just the good feeling just carried on, and I was coming back with more medals and more medals. And then went into World Championships feeling really good, and obviously came back with our Olympic qualification spot. And it all pretty much went well from there. So this really has been a busy year for you and you've got lots going on. Can you tell us a little bit about your family and how they've supported you through it all? I mean, I'm lucky that my parents have been around me and supporting me ever since I started gymnastics. My mum's involved in trampoline and she does all the scoring at the competitions for us. Um, and my dad's a photographer, so he's always around and generally around on the competition floor. So it's good to have like a, a friendly face around and you kind of get used to having them there. And, and it's, it's just nice to know that they're there and behind you 100%. Oh, that's fantastic. And obviously, um, compared to some of the artistic gymnasts, you're that little bit older. And um, I hear you're married as well. Yep, I've been married since the 9th of October 2010. So, yeah, it's just over a, a year and a bit now. And, yeah, it's good. I mean, Gary was in the sport. He was involved in trampolining at, on British teams at World and European Championships. So he completely understands the sport. And it's nice to know that when I go home, it's outside of trampolining, but still got complete support because he knows everything about what's going on and, and completely understands what I need to do. Yeah, and when you do get that chance to get away from the sport, which I know isn't often, um, what do you do? What do you get up to in your spare time? Um, Formula One's my thing. I absolutely love that. I've got him into that. So we kind of try and spend our, our Sundays watching the Formula One or we try and go to the football matches at St James's whenever we can and, and go and support Newcastle United and, and go out on day shopping and kind of the general things that everyone else does. It makes everything just, you know, we've got another life to go at the end of it and it's just nice that there's something else outside of gymnastics in our life. So obviously with the Olympics coming up, the spotlight's really been on sport in general this year. How have you, um, what have you done to help raise the profile of trampolining in terms of media? Yeah, I was pretty lucky after World Championships and the result I got there and we had an email coming from Hello Magazine that wanted me to get involved and, and do a piece on trampolining because obviously it's not a sport many people know about. Um, and then post test event I then had a, um, an email asking me to go to the Laurier's World Sports Awards so that was obviously quite a prestigious thing to go to and I got to go to 10 Downing Street and meet the Prime Minister and Matthew Pinson and, and loads of other people and that all kind of came off the back of the result I'd got at World Championships. Yeah and the World Championships was actually in Birmingham last year. Um, tell me what it was like having the home crowd support. We were all a little bit nervous about it. We weren't really sure what to expect. We'd never had a big home crowd before so it was our first kind of home thing to do so we didn't really know what to expect, how loud they were going to be and how many people there were going to be there. And as the days went on the crowd kind of got bigger and louder and more supportive of what we were doing and then you kind of got out there to compete and completely felt like everyone was behind you so if that's a taste of what 2012 is going to be like then it's going to be exciting. <laughs> Thank you.
Now you've been heavily involved in the IMBG campaign. Can you tell us a little bit about what the IMBG campaign means to you? I just think it's important that it's something where everyone that does gymnastics, no matter what discipline in gymnastics it does, they can get together and support each other. It's not just about the gymnasts supporting each other, but the parents, the clubs, the coaches. I just think it, it's nice to know that everyone out there who does gymnastics supports you, no matter, no matter whether it's a different discipline to the one that perhaps their daughters do or, or what they offer in their club. And I think it's just important that everybody supports British gymnastics. That's the only way we're going to move forward. Well, thank you very much, Kat. It's been great talking to you today, and I'm sure we'll be hearing lots about you in the future.